Hello, one and all, welcome to the A to the K Wrestling Show for this week in wrestling. And yes, it's Wednesday as we record this, so technically it's last week, but we're never on time, so I mean, it doesn't really depends, matter anyway. Like, we're, a, we're a Raw behind, and we're now an NXT behind. But, I mean, we, we haven't watched, no one's watched um, AEW can you, yet. Can you ever be behind, I mean, AEW's on Friday this week, so we've got a little bit of leeway. I don't even anymore. Of course it's on Friday this week, because we never been know when it's have a chance to know when AEW's on now. Well, that's it, that's it. Um, but let me kick off, Anthony, with the show of shows. Raw is, <laughs> Raw is bore, mundane, night Raw. Yeah, fuck, up. fuck me, wasting my life, that it is, um, and yours. Why are you listening to this? Go and just, just stop, stop now, quit while you're ahead. Um, so, we're going to talk about Raw this week, and the card, kicking off the show, <laughs> kicking off the show, was the Bob father, Bobby Lashley and his hoes. Um, yes, it's 2021. This is a thing. Um and then out comes Drew McIntyre, Kofi Kingston. And then Adam Pearce makes a match uh, because nothing's booked, obviously. Um, no one knows. Um, but he, he makes a match and says... <laughs> I mean, I mean Sonya Deville, who was basically just a, a competitor who went away for a bit and came back and is now somehow more senior than that guy. I don't really know how it all works, but still... Oh, I like that. They should have done that. <laughs> yeah, I would have liked that. Um, and just a random Shawn Michaels appears for the for the angel, and he just says like "fuck off, Shawn." Um. Ah, <laughs> oh, see, that would get him some actual screen time. I'd like that better than shoving roses up people's asses, as it seems to be his new gimmick. But yeah, so Pierce comes out, and he's like, eh. You guys are fighting. You guys should probably fight then, and then then we'll know who faces Bobby. Yeah. Um. So then we get the match. <laughs> this is actually a blessing in disguise. Thank you for being bitchy, whining little bastards. Yeah, you guys fight it up to yourselves. Phew. I know, right? It's got the easiest job ever. Um. So yeah, so that happens, and then the match is made, and we get Drew McIntyre versus Kofi Kingston to finally decide. Who's going to be the one to take on Bobby Lashley? A hell in a cell. Bang. Ends in a no contest. Well, you know. Yeah, it's been... Did we not break him in half? Put a claim on that, was that? Well, no, it was a no contest. So, really, it cleared everything up for us, which is all we could ever want. Here's hmm. what really pisses me off. Right? I'm sorry, right? Because I know you want to run through the card. But, like, the the inconsistent booking of Kofi Kingston is so okay. How can he be in a, way, in a match with Drew and it be realistic when he got absolutely dominated by Brock Lesnar and mm -hmm. Drew dominated Brock Lesnar. Yeah, no one pays attention to things that have happened. No, you should. It's, it's the right here, right now. The thing. It's, it's the thing. <laughs> it's the thing that happens right now. Um, so yeah, anyway. no contest. So we have no idea who Bobby's facing at Hell in a Cell. Um, we then have a two-minute beat the clock challenge. That's right, two minutes. Because that's how much attention the women's division is going to get this week. Two I literally gone, yeah, minutes. you've got two minutes. Um, literally, uh, with Ray Ripley taking on Nikki Cross, and Ray Ripley doesn't beat her within the two minutes, so Nikki Cross gets a victory. It's a small victory on her part. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's great to see um, Nikki Cross on TV, to be honest. I mean, yeah, it is. Um, I will not lie, but I don't know. I feel like she she deserves better. She always does. Um, you know, to be featured in a two-minute beat, beat the clock challenge. On and it's like... Podcast based in the UK. Oh, yeah, you do. Definitely do. Um... But yeah, so I don't know. Uh, two minutes, and then it's some kind of major victory for Nikki, where that she doesn't get pinned in two minutes. Kind of, yeah, I wasn't a fan. <laughs> like, um, like you're never gonna beat Rhea, but you know if you can knock out a pin, then that's a victory. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like, hmm, okay. And um, we then had Charlotte take it on Asuka. We've never seen that before. Um, Charlotte won. We've never seen that before. Um, we had Cedric taking on Shelton uh, this week. Cedric won. Whoa, it's one oh, each. Oh, what'll happen next week in Shelton versus Shelton? Let's see. Yeah. Did I say that right? Shedrick? Nope, but it's okay. <laughs> Love it. My personal favourite is Selton. <laughs> <laughs> sell, um, sell, Shelton, sell. That's just call him Selton. He needs to sell more. I'm, I'm um, thinking of the tag team name. I think Shedrick's the better one. I think it should be Shedrick. <laughs> Shedrick. Um, 
so yeah, Cedric won. Uh, we then had Riddle taking on Xavier Woods for some reason, and Riddle won with the RKO. <gasps> Using each other's moves now. It's it's getting serious. Uh, um, they're finishing each other's moves. Um, we we'll then had that. AJ Styles taking on Jackson Riker with Jackson Riker picking up the win over AJ Styles. I shit you now. Um, <laughs> We had Sheamus taking on Umberto Carrillo. He's back. It turns out he wasn't dead the other week. Um, and hello. Yeah, he's, he's still lost. So Sheamus still won. Um, and the main event, obviously the much anticipated main event. Of the <laughs> main event. That we are tuning in for this week, Anthony. Sees the main the, event. Yeah. The women's tag titles on the line yeah. as Natalia and Tamina took on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Sure. Let's have the main event be a rematch of a title that they don't respect at all. Let's have that as the main event. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So highlights. Um, obviously, we've got a lot to cover here. Highlights. Not a single fucking bomb. Um, okay. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll add mine in. Not a single fucking one. Great. Okay. At least we're on the same page. In terms of the O'Shites, Anthony. So firstly, the pointless shit with Drew and Kofi. So all that you know, fucking drawn out shit. You know. Starting off the show, then we have we have a match that's going to be the thing that you know determines the hell in a cell number one contender. No contest, so great. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. Drew, Drew, how fuck Drew, Drew? So how fucking lazy? How fucking lazy? How fucking lazy was this whole thing? It was like, well, we need someone to kick off the show. Well, we'll make a match between Drew and Kofi. Okay, sound. Who's going to win? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll just have them be in no contest, and we'll book the exact same thing next week. I'm. Actually, kind of relieved, kind of relieved that we're not going. Well, it's a triple threat. Well, like, that does seem to be the fucking constant yeah, triple threats, man. The general consensus at the moment. Um, but yeah, the whole thing's just so fucking lazy. Adam Pearce clearly booked nothing, and they put a match together. They didn't want to do anything with it. They needed to just kill some time this week, do it, and we'll book the same thing next it's week. Just the, the, I think this is the biggest problem with Raw. Is like. We need to use some time. We've got three hours and we need to use some time. It's the like, worst. It needs to be a two hour show made. for that very reason. 100% it does. It's so bad. You know, th- it's a whole hour wasted and they fuck up the whole show to make, like, try and do something with that third hour. It's awful. Um, the next one, I spoke about it as we went through the matches. A two minute beat the clock. Two minutes? Like, are you shitting me? That and got this fucked. Is the thing that aggravates me. Like, Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley are both fucking excellent in the ring, and they actually yeah. work well together, not that you get to see them that often, and you mm-hmm. give them two minutes of airtime on a three-hour show that you struggle to fill. Like, they couldn't be any more apparent of, like, this is how much we want to give the women. Like, and yeah, sure, we had Charlotte and Asuka, and we had a women's tag team main event. They were both shit, right? The match people wanted to actually see, it was like, well, it's one two minutes. Right here. Yeah. Terrible. Um, um, in terms of the rest of the show, whole lot of nothing. Um, and then the worst main event I have ever seen. Sound a bit like SCU when I'm saying this. Um, but yeah, truly fucking awful. The worst ending to a show ever as well. So to top the main event, the ending we got to the show was horrendous. The big closing moment of the flagship show of the fucking World Wrestling Entertainment promotion is Shayna fucking Baszler challenging Reginald and calling him an idiot. That's you know how we what? sign off the show. At least, at least, Carl, right? On the next draw, we're going to get a women's power moment where Shayna Baszler beats Reginald decisively. I'm sure we will. You know, I'm sure we will do anything as tone deaf and stupid as have Reginald win somehow. No, of course they wouldn't. No, of course not. Of course anyway, not. That wouldn't happen. We can't predict the future. Of course we can't. So we'll never know until next week. Um,. But yeah, my God, Anthony, this was fucking awful, even by Raw standards. It was so bad. It was so poorly put together. You know, there was a couple of little gems on there, I guess. You know, Cedric and, and Shelton. But we've seen it a million times. Um, you know, Seamus, Umberto. Seamus always puts on a good match. Umberto got a lot, a lot of uh, respect for that guy. But yeah, it was just wasn't enough to save it from being a terrible, terrible show. And it gets a illustrious 0.5 from me. And that's generous. It really is generous. You know because... what? Like, I'm, uh, I'm going to actually... I'm inspired by Raw this week. <laughs> inspired, Carl. So with my rating, I'm going to follow their, their um, 
they're booking decisions, and I'm actually going to um, I'm going to fail to give a rating, so it's going to end in a no contest for me. <laughs> Fucking love it. Uh, I'm sure you'll give the rating next week, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's what matters. Yeah, we'll we'll be back. Um, yeah, back on form next week. We'll give a rating. Yeah, awful. Fucking horrendous. Awful. Awful stuff. So anyway, speaking, speaking of awful, of awful stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now it's actually it was actually you know what right? There are some complaints, but. Let's talk yeah. through the cards. So let's let's move over to NXT, Carl. Have you pressed the magic button? I have. Hang on. Oh, magic. No lag there. No lag. Yep. Nope. <laughs> anyway, um, so NXT, Carl. As far as the card goes, we open the night with uh, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez going up against Emma Moon and Shotty Blackheart, with Emma Moon and Shotty Blackheart taking the win. We then saw Bobby Fish go up against Pete Dunne, with Pete Dunne taking the win. We had Mercedes Martinez going up against Zayda Ramirez, with Mercedes Martinez taking the win. We then saw another Ted DiBiase Cameron Grimes segment, which we will talk about. We then saw a, I want to say debuting, apologies if she has already, but I feel like we've not actually seen her in the yeah, ring until we, today. We yeah, saw Frankie Monet going up against Cora Jade with Frankie Monet taking the win. We then saw a segment of sorts between Bronson Reed and Santos Escobar. Uh, and then, and then, Carl, we close the night off with a match that nobody, I, I want to say nobody wanted, because plenty of people did for some fucking reason. It's like the same people who seem to think Kyle O'Reilly's worth watching. Uh, we saw Cameron Grimes, Cameron Grimes, wow, hang on. We saw Karrion Cross go up against Finn Balor. Slight difference. Mm-hmm. As far as highlights go, and as much as I didn't want the main event was actually a really good match it begs the question what does Balor do now because this was a fairly decisive win um, and it actually went to a referee's decision like in the sense of like you know it, it, you couldn't get any clearer that he has dominated Finn um, so I'm not sure what that leaves for Finn in terms of NXT maybe that could be a sign that he's moving somewhere else didn't go too well for him last time so I don't know um, and the the only reservation I have with it, and I'm going to call it a highlight for this week, but is the suggestion that it might be Kyle O'Reilly going up against Carrie and Cross next, and I really don't want that, but whatever. Uh, but the main event was a quality match, and I know you're not too happy with um, Finn Balor at the minute, Carl, but I'm, I'm sure you enjoyed this match from a technical standpoint. Yeah, the match itself was fine. You know, as you said, nobody really wanted to see it again. <laughs> you know, we've seen it. Um, and I think this was emphatically in the favour of Karrion Cross. So, I don't know, maybe this is the end for Finn. Maybe he will get up to the main roster, or, sorry, mm. one of the other two major brands. Um, uh, definitely on par. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it was okay, I guess. Um, you know, on paper, it's like, oh, that is a good main event. But it's like, when you think about it, we've seen it, and it was it was all right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only the only downside I have to it, is that it was a... It was a a rematch like I don't get why like for me I really want to see Pete Dunne go up against Karrion Cross, and I feel like we're delaying that sort of shocking and I know essentially he's going to be involved in this decider this number one contender decider match um, but I'm like Kyle O'Reilly's in that picture as well and people seem to really favour the suggestion that Kyle O'Reilly's going to be the guy to, to take him on and I'm like no Pete Dunne Pete Dunne is the guy to take him on the mm-hmm. longer we delay that the more it, it bothers me. And I know this is like a personal preference, but I would sooner see that matchup. I feel like I've not seen that yet. I don't want that. Yeah. I feel like the longer it takes, the less I'm going to be hyped for that as well. So like, they need exactly. to strike while, while it's hot. Yeah, exactly. And this might be a British thing, Carl. It might be because he is he's one of us. So we're like, <laughs> yeah, it should be Pete Dunn and not Kyle O'Reilly. I don't know. But like, that's because he's not I want shit to like Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> um, Undo his sulky face trying to look all hard. Mm. Anyway, um, other highlights was, um, for me, actually, Frankie Monet's debut. Um, so I don't know if there's been hype around her, but obviously she's, she's well known from TNA days. She's well known for being the wife of John Morrison. Um, but I was hyped, and I, I'm calling it a highlight because I don't feel like we have a women's wrestler on NXT just yet who is, who is as um, who conveys as much personality as a just mm. in her debut and her whole entrance and the, the extravagance of her. Like, I don't feel like we have a character like that at the moment. So I think 
it's got to be a highlight for that reason that she I think she's offering something to NXT that we haven't really got right now in terms of the women's roster. So mm-hmm. um, I, I'm I'm going to call it a plus. I think it, it it did what it needed to do in terms of like you know the match itself was essentially a squash. You know it, it put her on there and put. But um, I don't know. I feel, I'm I'm quite hyped for a. a Yeah, I think the uh, the whole hair and a dog thing is is uh, yeah, it's a bit excessive now yeah. at this point. Um, yeah, so. I do think she <laughs> she's you know a good character. Obviously, she's really good in Impact as a uh, Taya Valkyrie. So um, you know she's she's capable of big things. I also really like Cora Jade. I think she's got a lot of potential as well. I know she's uh, she's very new, um, but well, <clears throat> exactly. But I think she'll be someone who. No, mark my words, in a year or two's time, I think we'll be talking about Cora Jade as well. Um, Carl calls it. But <laughs> um, we had this bit of a second. Uh, Santa was asking. Oh, God. Sorry, words. <laughs> Santos Escobar made it very clear that he wants to go up against Bronson Reed for the North American title. And I really like that idea. And if they build it right, and this is very early doors, but if they bit right, I am so hyped for this this pairing and this matchup. So what you're saying is, um, if they build it, you will come. Um, <laughs> <laughs> feel the um, dreams, folks. Feel the dreams. Um yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm well, not... I thought you meant Wayne's World too. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. Um, <laughs> but it was originally Field of Dreams. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think um, I'm not a big fan of Bronson Reed. Um, no surprises. So I wasn't made I, up I'm when he so won the North American that, you Championship. Know, Bronson Reed's such a good guy. Nah, like I wasn't big on him at all when he first debuted, but he's he's grown on me so much. I, I, yeah. He's got something, man. He's got something. Bland. Um, Bland and Reed, I'll call him. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I am a fan of, uh, of Escobar, so... Yeah, maybe it will get me uh, reinvested in the North American title again. You know, obviously Johnny Gargano had it for what felt like forever. Um, and I feel like it just got passed oh, no, around. He between... lost it very quickly to well, Isaiah Scott, I think. Yeah, exactly. The other one? It, just, if it just felt like forever. And then obviously Damian Priest has had it as well for a bit. And it's just a bit like, uh, I just, yeah, I want, it, I want it to mean something. You know, it's kind of It the... was Isaiah Scott, wasn't it? Who did he lose it to? I'm, I'm getting a bit lost in the cruiserweights now. He lost it to a cruiserweight who had no right sort of being in that match I think it was I think it was a swerve yeah I think Sorry, we were swerved on, weren't we we were swerved mm-hmm. swerved Isaiah swerve. swerved 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 yeah um, so I don't know I think me being a big IC title mark um, I would like to really enjoy the North American Championship um, but mm. yeah it needs a bit more time work and prestige I think, ironically so. closer to the IC title than the IC title is right now yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm interested in Escobar basically, but yeah, Bronson Reed not so much. Yeah. No, I think they've both got something, and even if you don't like um, Reed at the minute, like like you say, Escobar is um, he, he's got that. Like I think he's. I, I don't. I feel disrespectful saying this, but he's above um, the cruiserweight scene and the two hundred five scene. Yeah. Like because, and that's not anything to do. Like it's no disrespect to that scene. It's just the way WWE book it. It's it's like third tier almost, isn't it? Like he's definitely like he's definitely at that caliber where he could be the North American champion. I wouldn't have any issue with that at all. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm interested to see this feud. So it's got to be a highlight. Moving on to the Oshai Carl, I've got one actual one and one general statement. So the first actual one was um, Cameron Grimes and Ted DiBiase. Now some people have praised this. Um, so obviously we had this pro between the two. They done this whole swerve where Ted Biassi it looked like he was going to pass the legacy on to uh, Cameron Grimes, which I think is what people were kind of expecting with this whole angle. Uh, nope, nope, we're going to use this to have some sort of feud between Cameron Grimes and LA Knight. Mm-hmm. And again, some people are praising it and going, "Well, you know, LA Knight could be a good successor to Ted DiBiase." And say, like, "No one has to be a successor to Ted DiBiase. Like, no one was the million dollar man. You can't recreate that shit. Like." It's never going to work. It's going to be something you drop after a few months anyway. And the longer they've kept this this little back and forth going between Cameron and Ted DiBiase, the more annoying it is. I I I praised the first little thing they done, the little backstage segment they done. I think it was over the watches. 
Um, but ever since then, it's just been like, I get it. Ted DiBiase is the $2 million dollar man. I, you know, <laughs> you know, it's just. I Have they know, learned I'm, I'm totally nothing this. from the ringmaster? Like, you know, Jesus Christ. Like we, you know, on the one hand, I'm like, okay, um, LA Knight, cool. He hasn't really done fuck all since he came over. So nice that he's getting to do something. But yeah, he doesn't need, <laughs> he doesn't need to be Cameron Grimes. Well, yeah, but I mean, he doesn't need to be a protege of Ted DiBiase. He doesn't need to be, you know, embroiled in this as some kind of like, which started off as a comedy bit into now turn it into a feud. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's, it's a strange Ted one. I love... can't have a match, so we need someone to do it. Exactly. Like I love Ted DiBiase. Don't get me wrong. I've I've not been a fan of the way he's been used, and I'm definitely not a fan of uh, Cameron Grimes. So, yeah. Um, but you know, LA Knight getting some getting some time on screen, getting involved in some kind of something. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm I'm all for that. But yeah, it's uh, it, it was never set up for success. Yeah. So that's that's my main oh shite really this whole sort of I think it's reaching a point now where it's like it's clear that they're going to move to a feud between LA Knight and Cameron Grimes and am I really that into it? No. The other oh shite I've got and it sadly is just a general statement and that was barring the highlights I pointed out if you look at the card it was very meh like, meh yeah, NXT meh NXT meh NXT it was, just, meh, NXT. It was, there. It was okay NXT. it wasn't particularly Bad, but like that's gotta way. be a shirt. That's gotta be a shirt right there, right? Meh, uh, meh, meh next tea. Yeah, meh next yeah. tea. I think we could do something with that. Monday night uh, raw, meh next tea. I like it. Um, yeah. SmackDown because SmackDown's fine right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's that sort of general feeling of the whole. The rest of the card was kind of like it was okay, you know. And I can't really knock it for that. You know, it wasn't annoying it wasn't bad to the point of like you're like frustrated with it it just wasn't great like there wasn't i can't really talk much about it you know what i mean mm. so it, it, i'm trying to articulate that as best i can but that's me other oh shite is that the, the rest of the car just wasn't really wasn't really great there wasn't really anything i can really write home about standard and on that basis, thorough for, for nxt in my opinion nah, it's been it's been good the last few weeks for me but yeah. this week it's gonna have to be a two and that's because i enjoyed the main events there were a couple of elements I enjoyed that they're building, but in terms of where we currently are, just there wasn't a lot there. There wasn't a lot of meat on the bones, as it were. So um, I'm going to have to give it a two. It was okay. So this may shock you. I'm going to agree. I'm going to give it a two. Um, in comparison to the other WWE produced shows, I think this was the best one this week, which we'll come to when we talk about SmackDown. Um, well, God but, damn. God damn indeed. But Anthony, we're now going to move on to. Friday night, Dynamite. Uh, yeah, moved away like from its Make traditional move, time slot this week. Um, <laughs> I remember someone on Reddit put something really funny once. I remember telling you it, and I was in stitches for ages, and I've completely forgot it. So if you can ever remember what that is, please tell me. Um, but yeah. So, the card for Friday night, Dynamite. The go-home show for Double or Nothing. We saw Darby Allen taking on Cesar Benoni with Allen picking up the win. We had the weigh-in. For Cody Rhodes. Of course we had a fucking way in for Cody Rhodes. Of course we did. Um, We had Powerhouse Hobbs and Christian Cage having a backstage scuffle. I'm still annoyed that uh, Mr. Hobbs there stealing my old wrestling name from the PlayStation 2 days. Yeah, fuming. Although I did see something again today on Reddit, just big enough to Reddit, I think it was. Uh, Anyway, um, if someone said, now that Tony Khan is going around buying all this licensed music, what about Kanye West's power for Powerhouse Hobbs? I'm fucking down nice. for that, to be fair. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, we had Hangman Page taking on Joey Janela with Hangman picking up the win. We had a promo from Moxley and Kingston. Orange Cassidy gives Kenny Omega his answer of whether or not he will take part at Double or Nothing. We had his Jade. answer was yes. <laughs> it was, yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> um, we had Jay Cargill taking on Kylan King, and obviously Cargill picked up the win. The TNT title was on the line. Miro, Dante Martin, whoever could come out on top. (laughs) Miro, of course. Um, We had Hikaru Shida being honoured for a one-year title reign um, and honoured she should be. That's crazy, isn't it? It is. We had Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page taking on Evil Uno and Stu Stu Grayson from Dark Order with Sky and Page picking up the win. Is there a good Uno? 
<laughs> Maybe. Um, and the main event of the evening was not actually a match. It was the celebration of the Inner Circle. So, highlights, Anthony. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah, let's end the show like that. Yeah, why not? Uh, highlights, so, uh, Hangman and Janela, um, I thought was a... No, yeah. It was Hangman. It was Hangman. Yeah, Hangman and Janela. Um, I thought it was a really good match. Um, because so, you've got a page, a cage, and a page. And the, in a yeah, cage. The, the path of rage from cage with the Christian cage and a Hangman page. So when you write your notes as page, you're like, was it page or cage or cage? Exactly. Page. And, then, and then, you know, you've got, you know, Soraya Bevis to, to throw in there as well. And that's a whole different kind of page. It's, yeah, it's a lot. Because that's like page and page against cage and page in a cage on a stage, right? Ah. Uh, Cage rage, um, mm-hmm. yeah, on the main stage. Um, so we had uh, obviously Hangman Page and Joey Janela. Um, I thought it was a really good match. We don't really see Joey Janela often. Um, when we do, it always tends to You're be right. somewhat decent. Um, but yeah, um, the thing I liked the most about it was just how he wasn't the stereotypical stupid, you know, gonna get caught out kind of character. He basically said after the match, you know what, I know. I know you stick now, Team Taz. Um, you know Brian Cage is here. I know any second now, Hook's going to come out one direction. Fucking uh, Ricky Starks is going to come out of another, and I'm going to get ambushed. Uh, you know, are you not man enough to just be Cage versus Page? Are you not man enough to do that at double or nothing? Um, and obviously Cage being like, yeah, I'm mad enough. Um, he basically fell into uh, Hangman's trap instead. Solid, so. solid Cage impression. Thanks, thanks. Um, so yeah, I, I was I was a fan of that to be fair. Um, the next highlight, so obviously we've got Cassidy, Omega, Pac. Um, the whole segment did enough for me to further the plot um, and made it a match that I was really looking forward to. So it was one which I was kind of like, okay, the outcome's pretty much you know predetermined. We already know this one. I'm not really super invested in it, and this one kind of made me think, okay. Uh, it is going to be a good match. This, you know, we we've seen yeah. them have individual matches against each other, and they've always been dead good. So, I think the no, only I'm thing down. for me, I would say, is like this is the type of thing I would criticize WWE for. Is like it was kind of unnecessary. Yeah, we knew the match was going to happen. There didn't need to be a decision made, you know. But yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, and then Miro, I thought looked strong. Obviously, again, we pretty much knew the outcome of that match. There was no you know, surprises in store for this one. Um, I wasn't particularly a fan of the aftermath, um, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, it just felt really hokey. Obviously, Lance Archer coming out, and it felt too, you know, choreographed almost, and yeah, it just wasn't great. But at the end of the day, Miro is our new TNT champion, and he needs to look strong and dominant, and that, that did it, basically. So yeah, Make Miro play. look strong, yeah. Make Miro look strong. Um, it worked fine for Roman. Um, so then we had Britt Baker's promo. She is fucking fire. Um, I fucking honestly, like honestly yeah. hope she manages to pick up the title from Hikaru Shida, double or nothing. Um, you know what? Like, I'll bet you right now, Carl, I will bet you 1,000 English pounds that she's going to take the win. I'm not taking that bet. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then the final highlight I had um, is the fans. So this is the first time in a long time we had a pretty much sold out Daly's place and my fucking God, did it make a difference. Um, so good having fans back night and day really on is. how much you enjoy the show. Obviously we had WrestleMania that had a lot of fans in attendance, but it was an open, well actually no, I mean Daly's place is an open roof place as well, but basically WrestleMania, the fans were pretty silent. You couldn't really hear them, but you could fucking hear them this week and it made a difference. Yeah. Um, so it was good. Yeah. Very this good. is why we're the type of guys who need a laugh track as well. Let's be honest. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so you need to know you, when to the laugh. Audience does, joking aside, the audience does make a difference. It really does. Yeah, 100%. Um, now, for the O'Shites, there was a lot of them, unfortunately. Um, so Whoa, the way, really? The way in, uh, we spoke about this, like, fuck me. Like The concept of it just pisses me <sighs> off, to be honest. Why? It's always Cody who's involved in this shit. Press conferences, weigh-ins, all this kind of shit. It's just like... I've, oh, I've just... probably given it credit in the past. I'm fairly confident I have because it wasn't a contract signing. But this is a contract signing. Yeah. It's it like, was all, it's and the same fucking thing. It's the thing is as well, it ultimately achieved nothing. It just wasted so much time. It was slow. It was boring. Cody comes out with about twenty people as his fucking entourage. It's like, holy shit, that's without fucking like Brandy and other people there as well. Like, my god, man, just come out on your own for fuck's sake, right? You know, QT mm-hmm. Marshall at one point accidentally calls fucking calls Anthony Agogo, Anthony Agoge. And it's like, oh, that's not good. Um, it was just a waste. Like, it was a 
terrible, terrible segments. It didn't make me any more hyped. If anything, it probably turned me off actually watching this match. Like, I know they do it in like you know other sports like UFC and stuff, but like it's it, this is wrestling. I don't need to know how much they fucking weigh. The thing it's is, not as well, stop the match happening. This this was particularly bad in that sense. Like if it would have been a weigh in and they came out and it was dead slick and it was like boom, weighed in, face off. Sound, I would have been okay with that. It took them about fucking five minutes to weigh each of them in because they couldn't figure out the fucking manual scales. You had Paul White there just <laughs> moving stuff along. I had no idea what he was doing. It was terrible. It was just a waste of time. It was so bad. Um, um, yeah. The next uh, yeah. oh shite I had. So, the inner circle being outsmarted by the pinnacle. Like, when did the... You know, cunning, conniving Chris Jericho of the inner circle as a heel becomes so fucking dumb and easy to manipulate. They, they flashed up on the screen that Dean Malenko was being attacked. Politics. Well, yeah, there was that. Um, <laughs> but they flashed up on the screen that Malenko was being attacked, and so everybody ran to go and save Dean, obviously walking right into a trap and got ambushed, and it was just like, fuck's sake, like, you, you don't need to be that stupid. Like, that wasn't the best, um, unfortunately. And who would attack Dean Malenko? Who'd be stupid enough to do that? Yeah. Who? He's That's the man honest. of a thousand holes, damn it. Um, you I always love that. I don't know people don't, like, some people don't watch Be the Elite at all, but I always love that bit with the Dark Order. <laughs> it's like, he sat at the bar and, like, should we go and attack him? He's like, well, he's, he's a man of a thousand one holes and there's, like, three of us. <laughs> I love the logic <laughs> behind it. Like, nice. Do um, like the Dark Order. Well, no, Demon that comes a ledge. Like, yeah. it, it, they should have known. They should have known better than this, Carl. They should have. They should have. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Inner Circle, silly, fell into the trap. Um, I mentioned this before, so I'll just gloss over it now, but the Miro Archer bit um, that happened after the match, it was just, you know, as I said, it was so hokey. The scuffle, you could just tell it was so choreographed, and they were waiting for each other to do their next bit, and it was just sloppy. <laughs> um, and it just, yeah, it, just, it was unnecessary as well, and I get it. AEW does not like to do DQs, and... You know, that's cool. It's, you know, it's admirable. Yeah, we can appreciate that in a way. Yeah, you know, the amount of no contests or DQs we get in WWE sound, we're on board for that. But <laughs> after every match, there's some kind of fucking beatdown or like someone comes out and it's, yeah, um, I don't know. This this one just felt a bit silly. And if anything, it made me think it's not going to be a good match, this uh, double or nothing, which is not what you want on a go-home show. Which, mm. speaking of a go-home show, this didn't feel like one, and it would be remiss of me to call WWE out on this on several occasions and not do the same for AW. This is you and your professionalism, professionalism at its peak, Carl, because, yeah, we can't miss something that we would call WWE on. Definitely no, not. And no, you're it just, quite right. I, this is a statement I totally agree with, that it just did not feel like a go-home show at this, all. This goes back to very early A to the K days where I'm just going to say, there was stuff and it happened. And that's all this show was. There was a card, there was matches, none of it made any fucking difference. You know, the only thing that had any kind of semblance of a... Um, there was two things, I think, which actually fed into the, the pay-per-view. One was Hangman convincing Brian Cage not to have anyone at ringside with him. Cool, made sense. I like that. It was a highlight. Um, the other one... Vincent to dress up as Terminator, or...? <laughs> yeah, that was a bit hokey as well. Um, and the other one well, being, well. obviously, Orange Cassidy giving his answer, where that he's obviously going to be there in a triple threat, which we knew he would be. So, other than that, though, yeah, it, this show just didn't need to happen, which I guess yeah. it only had 500,000 people watch it. Maybe they knew that, so they didn't put much effort into building stuff for the pay-per-view. <laughs> but, you know, it was a time it was a time slot shift. It was on at 10pm. It was a day shift. It was on, you know, on a Friday. Not the the opportune time. Who's you know, especially now that you know lockdowns and stuff have lifted. Who's home at ten o'clock on a Friday? So unsurprising that it got such low numbers. Um, and obviously competing against a lot of other stuff as well. So yeah, ultimately did not feel like a go home show. Uh, go home show. And for me, it gets a two out of five. Um, one of the lowest ratings for Dynamite in a long time, unfortunately. I would probably agree to have been it. So if I give it. I'm on the money. Here I go. Here we go. I'm on the money. So, let's talk through SmackDown and then we can talk about double or nothing because let's face it, we want double or nothing. So as far as have we done, have we done the screen? We've done the screen. Hang on, hang on. Magic. Your magic emitted. Yep. Seamless. There we go. There we seamless. Go. Seamless. Totally in sync. Anyway. 
SmackDown, Carl. As far as the card goes, we had the Street Profits going up against the Usos with Jimmy Rattan, obviously. We saw... Uh, uh, sorry, the Usos took the win, for those curious. We saw the Riot Squad go up against Natty and Tamina, with uh, Natty and Tamina taking the win. Remember them? We the Riot Squad. Huh. <laughs> Such a memory now. We saw Bianca Belair go up against Carmella, with Bianca Belair taking the win. Obviously. We saw Seth Rollins come out and cut a promo about being Seth Rollins. We'll just talk about that. We saw Kevin Owens go up against Apollo, with Kevin Owens taking the win, sort of, due to a DQ, because that's how Apollo's match is finished now, because he's got Dabba Kato, who goes by a different <laughs> name. Whatever. General Aziz? We saw, is he General Aziz? We saw, uh, well, Commander I, I, Aziz? I don't, he's Dabba Kato. He's Dabba Kato okay. with a stupid fucking coat. Right. <laughs> Dabba Kato. We saw... <laughs> we saw a segment, I'll call it a segment, a backstage segment with the Usos and Roman Reigns. I saw a bit of discord in the ranks there, which is uh, interesting to say the least, but we'll talk about that. They've somewhere. got a discord? What's, what's yeah, the, yeah. What's the uh, you can sign up. Yeah. Uh, they've also got a uh, Patreon, if you want to. <laughs> anyway, uh, we saw Shinsuke Nakamura go up against Chad Gable with Shinsuke Nakamura taking the win. And then we closed the night out, interestingly, with another tag match, Carl. But this one was the, the Mysterios versus Rude and Ziggles with the Mysterios taking the win. Now, let's talk about the highlights, shall we? <laughs> I have one highlight. One, Carl. And I'm curious to know how you feel about this because I feel like you might not agree with me. But my highlight is actually... And I don't really know where this is going, so I can't say with any certainty. But it's the whole stuff that's happening with the Usos and Roman Reigns. Like this whole thing was set up kind of nicely, where regardless of how it pays off, I'm going to be interested to see what happens. And this is th- this is the point, isn't it? I'm meant to be enthralled by the story. So Jimmy's back, and Jimmy is all for being part of the 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 Reigns family, if you will. But um, he's all for getting the tag titles with uh, with Jay. But obviously Roman, for whatever reason, is not happy with this as a concept, and he wants Jay. He's he's got Jay where he wants him, and he wants Jay to be, to betray Jimmy as it were, and he doesn't want them to go for the tag titles. And as the night pans out, it makes it very clear that they are going to be a legitimate contender for these tag titles, but Roman's not happy with that. So we're obviously building to something where, and this is where I couldn't tell you where it's going to go, we're either going to have Jay betray Roman or betray Jimmy, but something's going to build with this. And I'm actually intrigued, so it's got to be a highlight, because I think this is all being built really well. Yeah, um, I don't like it. You're right. Um, but at the same time, I don't know where it's going. So, yeah, I agree with uh, your whole sentiment, really. I just think, yeah, they could have done something or capitalised on this a bit sooner, the point where Jimmy first came back, and now it's just kind of dragged on a bit. And it's like, well, we're, you know, Oos, yeah, we're going to give you the tag team champions, Oos, and then everyone's going to have a belt, Oos, and then he fucks off. And then Jay's like, oh, yeah, I still love you, Roman. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh. I think... Uh, <laughs> It's a, I'm curious because like it's a difficult one to walk your way out of as well because if like if Jimmy falls in line then he does exactly what Jay did a few months back or a year ago even where he tries to sort of not go with Roman and what he wants but ultimately falls in line or you have them both betraying Roman and then where does that go? You're not going to have Roman versus the two of them so I'm curious like Mm. Uh, but I'm curious, so it's got to be a highlight. I mean, it, like it's more story and more build than anything you see in Raw, like yeah. at all. So <laughs> just for the story plot and alone, <laughs> I've got to give it credit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that's a highlight for me. Now let's talk about the Oshites. So the Osa, and this is probably not even a, a big thing now. We've done the news. But the utter disrespect of not even giving the Riot Squad an entrance this week was just annoying as fuck. Like, let's let's have them walk out during a commercial break. Fuck them. Who cares? Um, didn't like that at all. Like, they 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 are legitimate enough and big enough. They're not at some sort of up and column up. What the hell? Where it's up and coming talent. They're not performance center talent. They're not even NXT talent. Where they're coming up and and they're getting no. this chance on the show. Like, these are guys who've been a well-established tag team for years now and you don't let them even have what a couple of minutes worth of entrance they have they have an, an active and quite large fan base so yeah. you know people would actually pop when they hear the entrance theme and so yeah. for them just to be like oh yeah these these two are in the ring so it's like wow. say, this is fairly minor now we know that ruby's gone 
yeah. like sadly. Um, but yeah, I mean that to be honest, it's even worse knowing that Ruby's gone. Like she didn't even get an on her last match, she didn't even get an entrance because now she doesn't yeah. work for the company. A bit insulting but. that. Really. Mm-hmm. Um, I've kind of echoed on this when we were talking about the news, but I'm gonna I'm gonna use this time, Carl. I'm gonna use this time to fucking moan. Okay. And that's the whole Shinsuke Nakamura angle, right? Strap myself in for this. Yep. Strap yourself in for this, Carl. So, they are making me a massive fan of Corbin. I, I can't wait till Corbin becomes this massive face of the... He's going to become the face of the company at some point because all they're doing is screwing him over left and right. All the guy wants is to be acknowledged as the king of the ring that he legitimately won and walk around with his crown that he legitimately won and yet the good guys are screwing him over. It just what what is this? Why why is this? Welcome thing? back to Come another week me. of Anthony loves Corbin. Anthony loves Corbin. Corbin's a cool dude, and like, <laughs> he he likes cooking food or whatever he does on his social media, which actually looks really nice. You give me um, shit for my love for Drew. You're getting some back well, for Corbin here, boy. Well, at least at least Corbin is like, you know, he's got a lot of time served and is a consummate professional, unlike your Drew. <laughs> what? I don't know. I just throwing shots out there that they're not necessarily accurate anyway the whole I, I, i've moaned about this so many times but the fact that they always have good guys do heal things to to corbin and apparently we're meant to be on board with it because it's corbin it still bugs me it's still a heel action why is nakamura as a face so interested in stealing someone else's stuff i don't understand that mm. like and I, I, I'm, it's not even a me like and corbin thing this is a why isn't Nakamura being a heel then? Because he's doing heel things. I'm meant to applaud him if he low blows him because it's Corbin. Fuck it. I don't. I don't. What are the rules here? It's yeah. just weird and messy. And um, again, still not overly big on this. Um, Rick, is it Rick Boogs? Yeah, you mean Elias too? Elias Junior, um, mm-hmm. who apparently plays Nakamura out whenever he comes out to the ring now. For no yeah. reason, like no explanation for, no for that either. Reason. Just, I have a guitarist now. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but obviously he attacked Corbin. Corbin, because the match wasn't even a Corbin match. This was Nakamura going up against Chad Gable, because why not? Um, and Corbin sees the opportunity to get his, his uh, crown back, and Boogs is like, nah, you're not having that, son. For some reason, he's super mm. invested in Corbin not having that crown. Maybe this is just all playing part into you know Shinsuke's new gimmick of just being a thief. Like, which band did he steal that guy from? He's already after Corbin's <laughs> crown. He's just gonna keep stealing oh, shit. Love it. Yeah, the fucking kleptomaniac Nakamura. <laughs> Klep- kleptonakamura. I like it. <laughs> we just cut to segments of him backstage, just stealing random shit. Because <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I we really got to a point now where they're going right. We want to drop the King gimmick on Corbin, but we don't want to do another King of the Ring because we can't be arsed with that. Because you and me have expressed a few times where you don't have to win the King of the Ring and then walk into a King gimmick. That doesn't have to be a thing. Like, ideally, that wouldn't be a thing. (laughs) Yeah. Because that kind of fucking ruins the whole point. Like, we to cite the biggest example ever, Stone Cold Steve Austin did not have to be King Austin for, like... (laughs) four years afterwards or whatever so they could do another king of the ring yeah but the fact that we seem to be trying to move the king thing over so like shinsuke can be king of strong style i imagine this is going to end at some point where they have a match for that fucking crown and then that's corbin no longer king corbin i I've, imagine that's where we're going with this i've said this before i will say it again king of the ring needs to come back either june or july as a yearly pay-per-view with the winner getting a title shot at fucking SummerSlam. It just makes perfect yes. sense. You have the Rumble to Mania, and brilliant. then fuck all happens until like, the rest of the year. Yeah. Like, that, let's flounder. That's your year. midway point. That even even if you do it, structured. even if you do it later or something, you know what I mean? I, I mean, SummerSlam seems to be the best fit, but even if you did it like Survivor Series or something, it just, yeah, it needs to be something which happens throughout the year. You've got Money in the Bank, which happens in like June, but then again, nothing happens with that for like 12 months. It's like, we need something. For SummerSlam, if that if that is your second biggest pay per view in in your own minds, then mm. there needs to be something on the line of how you determine your number one contender. I totally agree because it seems like they just kind of coast through it with basically insert pay per view here. Like it doesn't even matter what the name of the pay per view is because they just 
utilize a pay-per-view mm-hmm. what makes it any more special nothing yeah. so let's have the king of the ring back let's do that regularly and like you say let's not make it a fucking king gimmick let's actually give it something worthwhile winning yeah i mean they can still win a fucking crown if they want that's fine <laughs> but let's give them something that's worth having as well yeah. I agree. But yeah, it bugs me that ultimately this this is going to culminate to a match between Corbin and Nakamura for that crown. And I, I feel like that's where this is going, and I just don't get it. On a pole, maybe? Maybe. Or maybe they're going to like fight over Rick Boogs. I don't know. <laughs> that's also an option. On a pole, obviously. Yeah. Um, my last Oshai call of the night, and I think, I'm hoping you can agree with me on this, is the Kevin Owens and Apollo match was a a total fucking waste. This was quite a short match. This ended in a disqualification. Both of these guys are really good in the ring and I imagine can put on a really good match together, but I'm yet to know because we get shit like this. The more Apollo does with, with Dabba Kato, Commander of Seas, whatever you want to call him, um, the worse it's getting because it seems we can't get a, a solid finish or a legitimate finish to any match or any decent match at all out of Apollo without these sort of shenanigans and it's like this was a waste we could have had a really good match between these two and instead we got shenanigans and it just uh, why why do we always have to do this now and he got a C's looking after him but he doesn't have to interfere and ruin everything no does he want to be known as the guy who ruins things like he did with Raw Underground <laughs> yes, solely on him. The cunt. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm sorry, that was mean. But um, yeah, it has to be an old shake because I just feel like that that could have been a match that I really enjoyed that I got nothing from, which is yeah. a shame. Agreed. So that's my last old shake, Carl. Unless you want to add anything. Um, nothing major, to be fair. No, doesn't doesn't fall into either category. But I feel like I, it's only worth. It, it, it's only right mentioning um, Seth Rollins. His promo felt a little bit directionless. Um, maybe heading towards something with Cesaro again, but I, I do enjoy Seth as the delusional heel that he is. So I enjoyed his promo and every bit about it. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Um, don't even have any thoughts on that, Carl. But like, I feel like they might be heading to him and Cesaro again. But all in all, I thought I, I love it when he comes out and he just talks like the arrogant heel that he is. He's just fucking fun. <laughs> It's a little bit rambling rabbit in it, but I do like Seth. Um, you know, he doesn't necessarily always have a direction, but he has a funny laugh and he's a smarmy guy, and that's all you can want from honest, a promo. That's kind of the vibe I got from this week, where they were like, <laughs> "Seth, go out and talk," and that was the only direction he had. Like, we're not heading really to anything. Maybe Cesaro again, because he did sort of reference that, but um, it felt like they were like, "Just fill some time for us, please." Yeah. But again, I enjoy it. He's he's great as this delusional. Um, saviour character that he, he believes he is uh, it's really fun so yep. shout out to that um, shout very out quick, to Seth. very quick fuck you to the to the to the main event um, of Dominic sort of holding his own against two people for most of the match fuck that mm-hmm. fuck that and everything it is yeah, but, uh, he's gonna, invincible it's Dominic he's a Mysterio gonna, yeah he's a Mysterio he's Mysterio I'm not gonna harp on that too long but it was just fucking shit um as a rating goes, Carl, because I've talked myself into it, as I've talked about SmackDown, I'm going to give it a one. Fuck this show. <laughs> Do you know what? Um, so I originally had it as 1.5, um, and I thought it was definitely worse than NXT, uh, but better than Raw. And I still think that statement is true, but I do think a 1 is appropriate because I gave Raw an 0.5. So, 1 yeah. from me as well. I think I feel like a 1 is appropriate because the, the only good thing about this was the, the build between the, the Reigns stuff. And that is stuff they are executing perfectly. I can't fault them on it. Like mm. People are loving Reigns as a heel. They're loving the whole story. People love the Usos more than you and I ever will, Carl. So, they're, they're getting way more out of this than we are. But... That is the only thing SmackDown's got. If you took that away, it'd be as bad as Raw, let's be honest. God, shudder at the thought. Indeed. So, yeah, I think a one's fair. And that, that is This Week in Wrestling. It is. And this, this is some people saying our name. You're watching or listening. To A to the K. The A to the K. 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 A to the
These guys are awesome. Check it out. Check it out. Change your life. You'll be thanking me later.